Hello everybody from Alaska. We have an absolutely beautiful morning today and we're doing something that we love doing and that is picking potatoes. The garden, I don't know if you can tell behind me, it's just about shut down. We've got snow, we have freezing temperatures. This is the last thing we need to do in the garden this year and we're pumped to do it. Let's go pick some potatoes. We're just about ready to start harvesting our potatoes. We previously covered them once they died back with some tarps, and that was because of all the cold temperatures and snow that we saw in the forecast. I'm glad we did that, and we waited until probably this early afternoon, so the sun's warm this row up. We should be able to get in there and get these potatoes out of the ground without too much struggle. In years past, we have definitely waited too long. What'd you say? This is what we're working with here. So a little bit of frost, not too bad. And the vines are dead sufficiently. They're all wet and goopy. We planted 11 varieties of potatoes in here and we're just gonna dig in and see, see what the first one is. Right up the surface. You know what? I may have to use hands. By hands, I mean no gloves. So this variety I'm pretty sure is called Huckleberry and I was confused when I purchased it. I thought it was Huckleberry Gold, which is a purple kind with a gold inside, but this is actually red flesh and red skin. So don't ask me how I got confused, but this is Huckleberry. Hey, that's not bad, man. Nice potato. So the plan is to try and keep these separate. Every year we just throw them all together and I think this year we're just interested in trying to keep them separate so we can see which varieties did the best. Sleeve roll. I can't do this without that. Is this his friend over here? He looks like him. Did we plant two of these? This is awesome. I think we planted two of these. Maybe more, I don't know. Check that out though, those are, those are really good. I didn't know it got that big. It's a nice sized potato. You know what, this is that one I felt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I felt this one. Oh no, I broke her, how sad. I felt this one earlier in the season and I just barely reached in there and felt that it kept going girth-wise. And I just laid my hands to rest and just put the dirt back on and there she is. I did sadly snap off a little piece, so that's just, this is gonna have to be eaten sooner or later. That's that's pretty dense too. That's probably that's probably it's probably a pound and two ounces. <laughs> there you go. Grow huckleberry. <laughs> Dang it! That's the seed potato. We usually don't find them that intact. This one's barely even mushy. So that was the mother to all of those offsprings. There's probably some more over on that side. Oh, I thought that was a rock. So there's about 25 large potatoes in here. Not this large, but other Pretty, I mean, pretty good sized potatoes. I'd call that medium to large for sure. And we only planted two of those. So this variety did do very well. We're not a huge fan of the red flesh potatoes, but again, this was an accident and obviously definitely performed very well. This is uh, the one that I got too hasty and broke it off. It reminds me of a elephant seal. Is that what they're called? The guys with the trunks for noses. So pretty cool. Onto the next variety here. I was kind of in charge of planting all these this year and we're getting kind of confused on what I planted where and what the varieties are, but we believe this is Susitna Gold. This is a, like a local variety up here. It is an extremely tasty potato. They don't get much bigger than that or maybe that and they're usually a little bit more round and they don't store like the longest, but that is a delicious potato. I think we, we planted a few of those. Yeah, there's a nice one, look at that. That 
one's got a flat spot. It was smashed against the wall. Yeah, that's a really good looking potato. Look at the pink on there. They're deep down. Look at that. More of them. Holy cow. This one actually did amazing this year. Yeah, more down there. So you can see the difference here. I'm pretty sure we might even have planted more of this one. This is sitting in gold and we've planted maybe one less of this one, the uh, huckleberry. I think we got about the same amount of potatoes from them, but it makes a huge difference if you get a potato like that or you get one that's smaller. Your pound of potatoes just goes way up. Beautiful so far though. That's the sitting in gold. Yep, we still have the sitting in gold. We planted a lot of these ones. Look at that. Wow. That's impressive. That's the size of a baseball. That's a big one for that. Great harvest so far. This year, we were semi-concerned how the potatoes were gonna do. When we planted them, we actually didn't uh, sprout them. And they took a while to sprout and kind of come up and start growing. They were a little slow. I think the cool rainy season and kind of a late winter really helped out with these. We're only two varieties in, and this is going amazing. These, these potatoes did great this year. More Sioux sitting in gold. <laughs> That's, I, I don't know how many of these we planted, but apparently... I just... The whole row, maybe? I don't know. Oh my gosh, like digging for dinosaur fossils. Just fell one. There it is. New variety, this is a really cool one. Let me see if I can find one that's not as dirty. Look at that, red with kind of like tiger stripes almost of the yellow. I believe this one's called Fiesta. And if it is, this is also another really delicious potato. I think we planted like five of these, I don't know. Uh, obviously you can tell this one's not the hugest variety in the world, but that's, I mean, who can complain with that? They make up for it in their flavor. And their look. Too. These are just like the coolest looking potatoes. Eric says you are a good looking potato. There you are. I'm just gonna say this again. You planted these spuds, not me. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened either. I, well, as long as they grow, right? It doesn't, doesn't really matter. matter. Yeah, as long Varieties as you get aside. Spuds. Oh no! And those ones are too small to keep. Hun you know, honey. You gotta catch and release on those honey. ones. Honey. Honey. Pretty awesome. This is, you know, what a root system of a potato looks like. And I gotta be honest, I never really knew how a potato grew. I didn't know how a lot of vegetables grew until we started growing our own. And this is like just a huge root system. I think this is the last plant on the Fiesta. And this one did the best out of all of them. Where is that big one? That's a pretty big one. That one's, these are like big ones. Oh my gosh, look at that. Those big roots. Oh, whoa, scraggler. Scraggling doesn't look like that. But what's this? This yeah. is a different one. Look. Is that German butterball still? I'm gonna be really honest. I maybe, like... maybe you should not plant the potatoes. Yeah, what did I do last year? I like intermingled them all. Last year no. or was this year, hun? This year. I think what happened is they just had long vines and they just... I think that's a German butterball. I'm not really certain what happened this year, huh? Some sort of russet? We did grow a few russets, but I think those... The uh, vines didn't die back. They went so late this year. It well, made more sense, honestly, to leave them. What's that, then? Let me see. Oh, that's... that's... No, that's not rose gold, I don't think. This is. Oh. <gasps> Magic mirror now. I found a purple. Oh, look at that! That's a huge purple! It was right below the surface. Okay, but hold on. We don't go there yet. We still got... Purple right on top. You see that? Yeah, they just mix in, so there's no way around it. Unless you just all grow all the same kind. You see the little decomposers on it? Yeah, I saw those. They're, uh... That's a big one.
another nice big yellow one and we are pretty sure that we're just mixing these up because they just seem to have mixed themselves up as they were growing i think i have chef buddy and daisy gold over here really i'm not that sure over the years we are starting to grow more yellow variety potatoes and that's just because we really like the way they taste so the colorful ones are really fun to grow magic molly is awesome this one is magic myrna and this is a popular alaskan variety it is so delicious hands down it takes a cake as far as flavor it, it tastes as if you already put butter on it and it's like this really deep rich golden almost orange flesh color on the inside so this is an awesome awesome potato glad i found it it's pretty amazing that Eric and I have been growing potatoes on this little plot for four years. It's a little bit bittersweet since we will not be growing any more potatoes here again. But this soil, it's just really neat. We've rotated them every year and four years ago, we actually grew our biggest potatoes. I think they were like two and a half pounds. Um, that, was, that was pretty insane stuff. That was when we had brought in all that compost in initially. So we got to keep going. We don't have much daylight left and we still have probably like 10 more plants to dig up. She, she grew with some other friends too. She always does so well. These ones are really cool. This one looks like a cactus. A lot more uh, gold on them than red. Usually they look more like this. I find that suspicious. Oh. You got a big one? That's a big one, look at that. Those are, that's a, that's yeah. That's a good variety. Uh-huh, that's a really good variety. My pal. Why? Ben is not as full as yours. What are you? <laughs> I'll share mine with we're, you. So we're still missing rushing fingerling. Whoa. That is a tank. Oh my. The big ones are down here. What the? That's uh, French fingerling. You found one. Nice. Oh yeah, here they are. Nice. Oh wow. Oh, fortunate. That's fine. I have to eat that one for dinner. Another one of our favorites, French fingerling. This one for us is known to just produce a ton of potatoes. We'll see how this one did. It is? Oh, whoa, look at that one. For a fingerling? That's huge. <gasps> that must be a russet? That's some, it looks just like that russet I've been pulling up. Look at those. Look at those three potatoes. Compared to my hand. Those are beauties. So the last two that Eric and I are digging up are actually, it's kind of something interesting that we tried this year. We haven't done it before. Someone was kind enough to send us what is known as true potato seed. And so you're probably, if you've grown potatoes before, you know that you go get these little seed potatoes is what they're called and you plant these and that's what gives you other potatoes. True potato seed actually comes from the fruit of a potato plant. So they don't always produce fruit. It usually has to be like the right environmental conditions. Most of ours do flower and produce fruit. This year we had a lot of these little potato fruits and that is how you get the true potato seed. I've never done it myself, but we started them a little bit earlier, probably like a month or two months earlier than we actually planted our potatoes in the ground. We started them from a seed inside in soil and they were small little transplants when we put them out here. So we're gonna dig them up and see how they did. And I think it's a russet variety. How cool is that? These grew from a little seed. Wow. And another seed. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. We did two, two plants. And I read if you start them a little bit earlier, you should get the same results from that you will from like a potato seed plant. But apparently this is like more economical. So I, I think that's why people do it. Maybe for the genetics too is why some people are interested in doing it that way. But that is really cool. And I have more for the future. So thank you very much. I'm very excited about that. That is such a good harvest. Look at how uh, blonde it is. How beautiful is that? That's a flat spud. That is as, what's as tall as your head? As tall as my head? Yeah, it's as big as your face. looks like it too, actually. That was huge. It's got a nose and everything. Okay, it's looking like, oh no, there's still a lot over here. What's going on? 
Oh, you had a plant right here too, it looks like. That's a potato plant right there. Was it? Yeah, that's a potato plant. I can't tell. Okay, so maybe I got super confused. That's it, all in all, great harvest this year. We got extremely confused harvesting these, trying to keep the varieties different because we plant them close together and we plant full potatoes and they just intertwined. But I mean, we don't really need to keep track of what kinds they are. Coming down here though, we think that this one, after further digging, the one that we thought was the, the one from True Seed, we think this might actually be Shepherdy or another kind that was started from an actual seed potato. And we believe this one is the russet that was started from a true seed. A little smaller, but a very good amount. And you can tell it's a russet, it's almost got like that, that thick skin on it that a russet potato, like you know, a baked potato would have. So still very good. We have all these different varieties. We've got totes full. We usually put them in a wheelbarrow. I'm sure this is over a wheelbarrow full, which is awesome for us. We store these potatoes in the cabin. We don't have the root cellar here anymore. We do have plans to build another one in the future, but for this year, this is gonna be awesome. We're gonna get these inside. We're calling it quits for the night. It's gonna freeze out here. We're bringing them all inside tonight. <laughs> We've moved our potatoes indoors and you can see they are cleaned up and spread out across the floor. We have these ones drying just for about a day or so. And then I also have a bunch of potatoes in these bins too. And the reason I did that is because we're gonna be storing them inside of our cabin and I don't want them that wet. Ideally, if you hadn't a root cellar, you just throw them down there with the moisture and the dirt and all that good stuff. But I don't wanna promote rot in here since we have the exact opposite climate to store potatoes. We found it works really well this way for us and we'll probably get like four, maybe even five months of storage from them indoors, which is pretty cool. The main thing with potatoes is actually not to expose them to light. So that is why I'm not going to be leaving them out here exposed to all this light for very long. I cleaned up a few really well so you could see the different, the different kinds that we planted. And this is Magic Myrna. I believe it's a fingerling. Pretty cool potato. Another one that looks like it is called Fiesta, but it's usually more of like a round shape. This is Susitna Gold and it has pink eyes. I don't know if you can see that. So that's, that's one of its uh, characteristics. And we have Red Gold, which has a light pink skin. It's pretty thin. And then it has usually gold flesh. And we have Shepherdy, which is pretty funny looking, kind of a funny color does taste a lot like a russet potato. I'm not sure if it's in the russet family or not. This is Sierra russet. So this is a russet potato. This is the one that we grew from seed from same thing. So like a russet type of potato, just a little bit smaller. Another neat one is magic Molly. I believe again, this is another type of fingerling and it is so beautiful. It has this like iridescent purple skin, especially right when you rinse them and clean them and it has purple flesh on the inside. This is French fingerling. So it looks really similar to this one, but it doesn't have the spots. And for the other three we grew, they are all yellow type potatoes or gold. So I'm having a hard time telling the difference. I believe this is German butterball. It usually grows in this oblong, like kind of round hockey puck shape. So that I think that's German butterball, but we grew them all like right next to each other. We also grew daisy gold and yellow fin and yellow fin was a new one for me this year. I'm not really sure who's who or what's what. Maybe they're the same type of potato. I don't know, but we grew both of them. These are gonna be the potatoes that we're actually making a meal with today, a new one for us. So we're gonna head over to the kitchen and get started. We're using our handy dandy mandolin to get some potato slices. We are going to make a French dish that I cannot pronounce, but you probably have heard of it and I call it au gratin. I haven't actually made it before, but it is similar to like scalloped potatoes. We are not gonna be using cheese in this dish though. We're starting with the potatoes, getting those cut up and I'm using all different varieties of those gold potatoes. They say you wanna use like a starchy potato, one that's good for like baking or frying. color. I think this is enough potatoes. We used about seven medium 
or large sized potatoes. And we're using this dish, which is gonna be, I think it's an eight by eight square. And there's a little bit of differing opinions on whether you should soak the potatoes or not, but we're going to. So I'm just soaking them in a little bit of water and we're gonna get started on our sauce next. Got a knob of butter in this cast iron skillet with some minced shallot and garlic. Sounds fantastic already. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper, and then we're going to add thyme and oregano. I think there's normally just thyme in it, but I have a mixture of both, so that's what we're gonna do. And then we're also gonna be adding some nutmeg. I don't have actual measurements. I'm just kind of using my judgment, but we added some heavy whipping cream to this. We didn't let it saute very long because it is going to cook much longer in the oven. So this is our sauce and we're gonna head back over to our potatoes. We added some wax paper to this casserole dish. I just did that as a safety measure because I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get it out smoothly if I didn't do that. And now comes the time consuming part, which is all the layers. So first thing you do is take spoonful of that cream sauce and put it down at the bottom. We're going to make sure we get a nice layer at the bottom. And we're going to start layering in our potatoes and you want the potatoes to overlap. This is the part that kind of becomes time consuming because we have to do probably like three inches worth of this. We top that off with the rest of the sauce and I actually was kind of pushing down on this just a little bit. Make sure that all the potatoes are going to be covered. We've got the oven going at 325. This is going to cook for two hours and that is just the beginning. We're going to try to find a top for this and put this in the oven. While the potatoes are in the oven, Eric and I are working on another project. We are going to be pickling or canning our Brussels sprouts and I have to thank Rachel personally for this from that 1870s homestead. She has a lot of awesome canning recipes and Eric and I have never tried canning Brussels sprouts. We love them. They are fantastic fresh, but unfortunately we can only eat them fresh for maybe like two weeks or so before they have to be preserved because it freezes outside and they're not that good frozen in my opinion. So I'm really excited to can them and we're not just going to be doing a normal pickling recipe. Hers is awesome. She adds sweetness to it and uses balsamic vinegar instead of just standard white distilled vinegar. Those ingredients are specifically what sounded really intriguing to Eric and I. So we are very ecstatic to make this. We're just gonna be doing a few little modifications to the recipe. I'm a really big fan of growing your own food and then figuring out how you want to can it. It does take quite a bit of experience and knowledge to do that, but this is something I'm very excited about. So we're gonna start with blanching these first. So we just blanched these for maybe two to three minutes. Not that long at all. I just wanted to cook them just a little bit so they fit a little bit better into our jars. Onto the brine, we think we have about 12 cups of Brussels sprouts or six pints worth. So we're going to make six cups of the brine. We're estimating that probably each pint will take about a cup of liquid and it's pretty heavy on the balsamic. So we are using three cups of balsamic in this. I have some white wine vinegar that we infuse this summer. I have that leftover, so I'm using that. I think it was like fireweed and a whole bunch of other stuff from the garden. So a cup and a half is going in there. And then we also have some dry white wine that we are adding to. We're doing about a cup and a half of that. And for the sweet part of the recipe, we're going to be using maple syrup. Probably gonna start with a quarter cup or so. And then I have some chocolate honey that I'm trying to use in recipes. So we're going to add a little bit of that in here too. It matches the color and everything. We've already got our jars prepared. And while this is heating up, we're just going to put some finishing touches. We're going to add some cayenne pepper.
pepper spice <laughs> and we're gonna add some salt and pepper to this. Okay, we definitely need some more drawers. Looks like each pint is taking probably like three quarters cup of liquid, so that's perfect. And we're gonna leave a quarter inch head space. I am gonna add some fresh squeezed lemon juice in there to top it off. And we're gonna process these for 20 minutes in a water bather. That looks so neat, that bright green with the dark brine. Get these all in here. All right. All right, you may think that this is ready to eat now, but that is actually not the case. We're going to let this chill outside for a few hours, put something kind of heavy on it to squish those potatoes down, and then Eric's gonna be finishing this meal up for us. So. Well, this is actually very delicate work. Our potatoes, we let sit overnight and we kind of chopped them up into little stacks or like rectangles and we cleaned up the edges so they're nice and square. And all we're doing now is we're frying them up and crisping them in a little bit of butter and olive oil and they're turned out pretty good so far. Look at those, they look delicious and it's time, it's time to eat. It is, and I'm like extremely hungry right now. <laughs> As per usual. Uh, these look awesome, they are called potato stacks when you fry them this way. We've never had it, we're excited to try it. Yeah, I put a little salt and pepper on there, a little bit of herbs. We're super excited to be eating potatoes again and on a separate note, the big bad boy with its little nose, nose was just under two pounds. So not a record for us, but still huge. one giant potato. Dense. Absolutely. We're excited for that Brussels sprout that we Brussels sprout dish that we canned up. I can't wait to eat it. We're probably going to reheat it and make a glaze out of that brine. Yeah, because those are it's good. pickled. Yeah. And it's time to eat, right? Let's eat it. Falling apart on yeah, mine's falling apart too. Need something. A little salt, maybe? For how much went into this, it's surprisingly a little. Um, not. I don't want to use the term bland, but I could use like some hot sauce <laughs> or something. The crispy potato part is delicious. Yeah, it's it's really good. Yeah, it is. It is a kind. It doesn't have a ton of flavor. Plain. I think it just needs a little salt. I'm gonna put a little truffle salt on mine. Do you want some? Sure. And in all honesty, I'm really tempted to make this dish again and eat it just straight out of the oven. I think that's how how a lot of people eat it. They don't always cut it up into little squares and retoast it, but we wanted to try this first. And now we know what it tastes like. We know, we're gonna finish up. We got a whole nother plate to eat. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Where's the flavor? <laughs> I know, that's what I, you know what I mean. For some reason, there's just not a lot of flavor in this. You Maybe. would think butter and cream did it, but what's going on? It absorbed into the potatoes and went away apparently. Maybe. Cook it a little longer in the oven, maybe like an hour longer. And just try it out of the oven next time or we'll just maybe it. just try it out of the oven like a casserole. A little that's, salt. That's what I think too. Did we put hot pepper flakes in this or no? I no. No, there's no hot pepper flakes at all. Oh. 
Still pretty good. Holy cow, that's a huge potato!